Buzz. Z. Buzz. Man, I can't get the stupid thing's name out. It's too ridiculous. Wait, wait, wait. Are we rolling? <clears throat> hey, guys. This is my review of the new Zoids Wild Buzz. <laughs> I can't do it, man. Just play the thing. Seriously though, we're reviewing the winner of the worst name in the Zoids Wild lineup award today, and I have to apologize in advance for the audio you're about to hear, but well, just bear with me. All right, so let's start this by looking at the box first. As usual, we have, um, well, your typical Zoids Wild photo manip on the front here. Uh, with the whole squadron of Bazootals, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know how obvious this is on camera, but uh, like with the Beast Liger, yet again, it looks like the decals were actually photoshopped onto the model after the fact, which I'll never understand why they're doing that, but okay. Uh, the rest of this looks uh, pretty much like what you'd expect. Um, let's see, I actually haven't looked at this box yet. Uh, <laughs> The, yeah, the thing I was interested in was yet again here, actually I can show you this a little better if I do this, here on the side we have, uh, we have the series of pictures showing the different modes, you know, parts in the backs, bow mode, regular mode, and I'm guessing this is machine blast mode, uh, because it's not on the back anymore. What we have on the back is... Um, well, a picture of the Bazoodle in both, actually in both modes here. Uh, another really cool photo manip where it's uh, launching a bunch of beer cans in the air. Um, and this paper plan picture, which as it turns out now is actually not... Um, <clears throat> Is actually not a demonstration of, of, of like a CP unit or extra parts that you can buy. I really, I'm really not sure what this is supposed to be. It looks cool, it's sort of a like a Buster Tortoise uh, type upgrade that they've done here. But uh, yeah, who knows? Um, there are actually bonus parts coming, but they don't look like this. So anyway, let's get this thing out of the box um, if I can. That's weird. Oh, okay. Oh, it's cause I'm because I'm holding it upside down. Eh, come on. All right, let's get rid of the box. We have the cardboard insert. We have the parts bags, A, B, S. Let's see if there's anything beside the uh, regular gearbox. There is not. Uh, the gearbox, of course, you know, this is always wild gearbox. Nothing surprising anymore at this point. Um, what I actually want to do first is I want to get a look at the parts list in the instructions because uh, if you've been watching my reviews, you know what's coming. What's coming is me being unable to open a plastic bag. Aside from that though, <laughs> I have the uh, Ganon Toys uh, instructions with me here because I want to see how many parts these two kits have in common. Let me make some, let me make some space here. Um, okay, so, Ganon Toys in Minty Mint, and Bazoodle in uh, Olive Drab, I guess. So, it's the mechanical parts first, huh? Let's take a look at those because it looks like the contents of the s bag. you see here S1, S2, the two crank pieces, whatever that was, this looks the same. Um, apparently uh, the, the Bazoodle has differently colored eyes and that's it. So, the rest should be at least somewhat different. Um, make sure that we can actually see this on camera. So we've got uh, A6 and A7 and A5 from the Ganon toys have different numbers here. These are obviously the same parts. 
Uh, this is the Canon on the Ganon toys or the Ganon on the Canon toys. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> and these are the, uh, I'm guessing the parts for the, for the weapons on the Bazoodle. So difference there. There's also, there's more here, which, uh, explains why the numbers here are different. This piece, A8 on, I'm going to do this. Um, A, A8 on the Ganon toys and A10. On the bazoodle is the same, this is the same, these are the torso halves, they look the same. Um, the heads, legs, feet, yeah, these are all like every, no, hold on. These two are different, they're bigger for some reason. Um, I don't know if you can see this, uh, hold on. A30 and A31 from the Ganon toys and A32 and 33 from the Bazoodle are different. These are bigger for some reason. They look very similar otherwise. The rest is basically like it's a different Canon and the bone mode is the same. Finally, um, can you tell I don't rehearse this? <laughs> um, we have the armor, which is pretty much completely different. Um, also the order they're in, uh, the B-back includes another part of the, um, another weapon part here on the, on the bazoodle. Uh, we have, you see here, the headpieces, um, these I would guess are the main, um, uh, the main torso armor pieces, they're different. These two probably correspond with these two. Um, and to be honest, I don't exactly remember what this stuff is, but it's different. And we have a lot more parts also here in the bazoodle. So, um, yeah, that's what we're looking at folks. Uh, I'm going to get the parts out of the box real, real quick. Now that I know what is sort of the stuff that's worth looking at because it's new. And then we're going to find out what all this stuff does. So. Let's actually do this one, uh, one set of parts at a time. In your A bag, you have, what am I actually interested in? I'm interested in the silver pieces. So that would be A3. Um, here we go. Yeah, that's this big ass cannon here. Not a whole lot of detail, but it doesn't really need it. I do like this, see, like the, the inside of the, uh, of the barrel has these grooves to make it look a bit more interesting. That's cool. Um, and then we have a bunch more. Um, yeah, these are these two two big pieces that are basically like aside from the weapon are the only thing that's, that's new uh, on the bazoodle. Um, I mean, yeah, other than the weapon, that's what I'm saying. Uh, these are the same feet as on the Ganon toys. Two more of those. This is A5 and A6. It's also parts of the weapons, I think. Uh, again, completely new parts. But, well, it looks like so it's wild parts. Very nicely detailed and all that. Um, and we have these two. Now, um, I'm not going to get any of these out of their backs for the moment because they're identical with uh, the, the, the Ganon toys. I mean, I keep getting the two confused now. This is weird. Um, just want to take a quick look at what's in B. Wow, B is actually two separate backs. I think that's the first. Maybe on the Death Rex? I can't remember. Um, well, it's one of the turtles. So it actually has armor, unlike a lot of other Zoids Wild kids. So let's take a look at these. Um, I wanted to see the head first. Okay, of course, to no one's surprise, we have uh, the visor uh, is pre-painted. And also because these snap into one another, come on, like that, you're going to end up with, oh, yeah, I can't do that right now, but I mean, I can demonstrate what I mean. You're going to end up with a seam line going across the visor, same as on the uh, cannonball, unfortunately. Um, yeah, these armor parts, I mean, it very much sort of follows the design cues from the Ganon toys. Of course, you've got these <laughs> little funky looking rectangular rivets here, very angular shapes on everything. 
um, lots of extra pegs if you want to uh, if you want to attach more weapons uh, which by the way I don't know if I've ever commented on this but I, I do quite like these pegs um, if if you like the fact that uh, these Zoids have um, spare pegs basically to attach extra parts to them, which not everyone does, but if you like that for customizability, I think it's nice that they're actually designed to look like something. I mean, they're basically designed like small rubber caps, which I think is pretty cool because then I mean, they look like something that's supposed to be there even if you don't plug anything on them and not just like, you know, what I've been sort of calling pegs to nowhere. Um, so that's cool. Okay, uh, these are um, these have duplicates here. This is the last one uh, that we need to look at. Um, this moves somehow to, uh, to change it into machine blast mode, no doubt. But like I said, I can't remember how any of this works, to be honest. Uh, nice detail here and also some internal detail, which uh, I guess this means this part is going to be exposed. Definitely appreciate the fact that they did something, uh, that they did something here to make this look like something. Hollow parts, hollow parts have definitely been an issue with um, Zoids Wild Kits, and uh, so that's progress. One last thing I wanted to look at in the S bag is I'm gonna get one of these caps out because I kind of forgot to do it when I did the cannonball. Um, yeah, this is a. This is one of these machine caps, also has some flash here that I'm gonna to have to get rid of, but um, you see here, hold on, let me make sure I show this in a way where you can actually see it on camera. It has this groove here, which is typical, of course, making it look kind of like a giant screw bolt or something, but it also has rivets around it. That's a new design element that they introduced with the cannonball, and uh, it looks really cool. Um, um, Actually, yeah, I'm not doing this in order, but oh well. <laughs> There's more B back parts here. All right, in the second B back, we have uh, another two cannons. Actually, I thought these sandwiched together for a second there. I think these go on the side, if I remember correctly. Uh, very cool, nice detail. Looking a bit like a pump action shotgun, which makes absolutely no sense, but oh well. Another, oh, this is the beer can launcher, right? <laughs> you have this missile launcher here that I guess goes on the back somewhere. And this big ass wheel that looks like someone cut a slice out of a Star Wars spaceship. Um, no idea what this does. It's new, you know, the, cannon, the Ganon toys didn't have this, so I don't know what this is. Um, anyway, that's that's all the parts that are worth looking at, really. The rest is identical with the Ganon toys. So I'm going to snap this guy together, and then we're going to check it out. Before we do that, though, <laughs> we need to take a quick look at the sticker sheet. Um, this is, uh, well, basically it's it's what these more recent uh, Zoids Wild sticker sheets have been, have been like. It's a little hard to show, but you have this, uh, this really cool-looking uh you know turtle um pictogram that i already noticed on the uh on the box um the rest looks you know some standard zoids markings warning signs the numbers this little thing here that looks like an anchor is a bit weird i don't know what that's supposed to be and it's all in this sort of very bright uh orange that i assume is going to look good on the uh on the bazoodle itself also kind of matches the color of the of the caps so yeah uh, cool sticker sheets. And now let's really take a look at it in action. No surprises, of course. This is just a Ganon toys with different armor and a bigger gun, really, so it walks the same. But it looks good, you know, nice and stompy. And here's the machine blast mode. I could say all sorts of things now, but, um... You know who my favorite Decepticon is? Thrust. It's Thrust.
So anyway, I feel like there isn't too much to say about the Zoid that I haven't already said about the Ganon toys, but I also don't want to sound too dismissive of it, so I'm gonna talk a bit anyway. The Ganon Toys was an early favorite of mine in the line, and I really feel like the Bazoodle is basically an improvement in every way. It looks more angular and aggressive, it has more weapons, and it doesn't come in that silly collar that was basically the only thing I didn't like about the Ganon Toys, so this is a good one. I also continue to be rather pleased with these new visor type heads because they just look more like a Zoid's head. I think I've mentioned before that I'm fine with things moving in new directions and I'd actually prefer for Zoid's Wild not to go too far down the nostalgia route because that's never worked in the past. But I think this is within reason and it's a big improvement over the googly eyes. So, in all honesty, I think even if you already have a Ganon Toys, you should get this one too. It looks good, it walks well, and I really think it looks different enough from the original to be its own thing. And that's it for this one. I'm trying to get a video out every week at the moment, and I think I should be able to pull this off at least until sometime in October, because I have a lot of stuff to review and to showcase, but we'll see. I'm working on a build for Lincoln Wright's Machine and Krieger contest at the moment, and if you're wondering about the Berserk Fuhrer, I'm actually waiting for something I've ordered for that build, and then I'm close to finishing the backpack, so we should actually have an update on that one soon as well. Meanwhile, thanks for watching, please do the thing down there I like, you know, where you click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Did I really make two lame sex jokes in this video? I did, didn't I? Ugh.